Okay, we're now moving on to the third part of Lecture 3, Numerical Quadrature. While we're not actually doing programming in this class, we are going to definitely spend some time talking about how computation works. And this is an opportunity to discuss how one calculates integrals using a numerical approach. So we've already sort of seen the different ways that we can do this with rectangles. And these three images are showing the three different common ways that one will evaluate the integral of a function numerically. They're shown pictorially there. We have the left endpoint on the left hand side. We have the right endpoint in the middle. And we have the midpoint rule on the right hand side. All of the intervals are exactly the same width. And the only difference is the question of how tall is the rectangle depending upon what value of the function we're going to take for determining the height of the rectangle. So on the left-hand rule, we take the function value on the left-hand part of the interval. For the right-hand rule, we take the function value on the right-hand side of the interval. And for the midpoint rule, we take the function value at the middle of the interval. Now in a numerical calculation, what you do is you keep reducing that step size until the results stop changing. And if you want to do it efficiently, the best way to do it is to reduce each of those intervals by a factor of 2 each time. In that way, the previous results from an earlier calculation can be employed in determining the next result, so you don't have to reevaluate the function as many different times. And often in a computation, it's the function evaluation that is the thing that takes up most of the time. You've probably heard of some of the other rules. We've just been discussing the rectangular rules, which go under the name of uh, Riemann summation or Riemann Stilte's integration. There's something that many people are familiar with called the trapezoidal rule. And the trapezoidal rule works better in most cases. For this particular example depicted here, it doesn't work so well. However, if I divided the integral, the interval in half, you would see that then the two trapezoids that fit there would fit that curved function much better. Now it turns out the area of a trapezoid is equal to the average of the height multiplied by the width of the rectangle. And for any point that's an inner point in that interval, I get the uh, average for the trapezoid when it, the vertex is on the left-hand side and when the vertex is on the right-hand side. So all of those points add up together. And I end up having a rule that looks very similar to the rectangular rule, except the points at the ends of the interval are each weighted by one half because I only get one half of the trapezoid for the rules that end on the end point. Now the final result on the right-hand side is the so-called Simpson's rule. And in that case, what we're doing is we're fitting the three points of the function to a parabola for doing the integration, and that will integrate exactly any functions that are constants, linear, or parabolas. There are techniques that go even further than this to higher order and fit and exactly integrate things that are higher powers. Those techniques are called Romberg integration. And finally, there's one other class of methods for integration called Gaussian integration which is quite different from these forms of integration. And I believe we'll be discussing Gaussian integration a bit later on in the class. So I'm not going to go into any details here.